Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week, we're going to start off with a really quick trip over to my dad's place to take these freshly sandblasted wheels over to him because he's got a tire changing tool so I can swap out some valve stems. The valve stems on these wheels are pretty bad and I'd have to say, like I mentioned last week, this pressure washer slash sand, sand blaster, I guess you'd call it, pretty awesome. Rain, rain, rain. Yeah, these are the screwing part. So my dad's had this old Bear brand tire changing tool for as long as I can remember, and I can still hear this thing, you know, as a child. I can remember the sound that it made out in the shop, him changing tires all the time for customers. He holds on to it, or has held on to it for forever, and every once in a while, you know, it super, comes in super handy. It's not great for big, wide tires, but, you know, for normal automobile-sized tires, it's, it's perfectly fine. So I'm going from the completely rubber flexible valve stems to the screw in metal type. A little bit more as far as expense, but in my experience they just last a lot longer. You get those longer valve stems that reach out past the beauty rings and stuff that go on these wheels, and they just they flex a lot, right? We're well, driving down the road at the base where these were broken. So yeah. decided to go with the <laughs> metal ones. So hopefully I don't have any any future yeah. trouble with them. You want a light? Yeah. Get, uh, grab that I got a light in my pocket. Okay. You ready for gardening? Getting ready anyway? Yeah, I just do it really well. People people try to get in a big hurry and once cold once cold stuff on stuff don't do good. Better off just to wait for it. Weather straightens up, or at least gets consistent. Yeah. I've got tomato plants in boxes. They might come up again. Yeah. Like I always put them. Yeah. Rainy day, any butters? Yeah. He don't like he's a rainy days either. Yeah, he won't want him in the house, being all wet. No. Dry this old dog off. Let me try to get off. Yeah. It's helpful, isn't it? Yeah. Stripping off. <laughs> he's just like a kid. Yeah. He's a big baby. Yeah. He's for sure. Big baby. Steve's got the wheels done, a little primer and paint, new rings, caps, lug nuts, looking pretty good. So the first part we're going to put on is the radiator support. Everything hangs off this really. It supports the radiator obviously. Fenders, hood, latch, headlights, grill, everything bolts to this unit right here. Now usually these are just totally wiped out, rusted uh, beyond recognition. This is the original one. All I did was sandblast it and give it a quick prime and a rattle can paint job. Looks good. Looks good enough, right? And I did have to replace a little, little section of it there that was corroded out, but not too bad. Let's see if we can't get this thing installed. It's gonna be awesome. So before we start closing this thing in, while we can still see this engine really well, I want to touch on just a couple things really quick. 
Now I decided to stick with the V-belt system. I know in the past I had mentioned that I'd like to go with a serpentine belt setup. I just think they look better. They're a little less maintenance once you get them set up proper because this automatic tensioner keeps track of belt wear and stretch and you know, less, little less likely to squeal. But as far as reliability, I think this is probably my best bet. Main reason is I have two belts driving the water pump here where with a serpentine belt setup, you just get the one and you know what happens when your one belt breaks that runs everything. You just pull over to the side of the road, call it a day, call a tow truck and you know take care of it later. But with this one, if either the alternator belt breaks or the power steering belt breaks, you know I'm still driving the water pump, keeping the engine cool and can most likely get home or closer to home, which is always a good thing. So just decided to stick with this, not to mention I had it and a serpentine belt setup, at least an aftermarket one is quite pricey. So I think this is my best bet. Also, I went over all the wiring, the engine loom wiring on this thing, wrapped it in this protective wrap. Pro or any damage that was done to this harness, which it had quite a bit, I just went ahead and fixed it while I was at it, probably spent a good day and a half just on the wiring harness underneath the hood here. And it looks pretty good. Uh, you probably don't even hardly see any wires and that's because for one, it doesn't take a lot of wires to run one of these. And for two, I ran them in a way where they were you know, really tucked up to each other, kind of hidden. I just think it looks better than that old spider web nest of wires. Also ran, like I'd mentioned, I think, the plug wires underneath the headers and back up behind the heads, wrapped them in that heat insulating wrap to protect them from abrasion and heat. Because nine times out of 10, a plug wire failure is due to it either getting rubbed just from the engine vibrations or just due to heat from your exhaust manifolds or headers. So I think that I've done all that I can do, at least all that I know to do, to make this as a reliable setup as possible. So I think it looks good. So another good thing about this V-belt setup is that both belts are the exact same part number. So all I have to do is keep one belt behind the seat and it'll work for either the power steering pump or the alternator. So I'll just leave this loose that way you know, can square the front end up. You just snug them down a little, and then once you get the hood and the front end squared away, you can tighten it down. So has anybody got any good experience with aftermarket horns? I really need to pick some up. I just haven't, haven't had the chance. I'm gonna install these old ones, even though they don't work, just so the bolts are in place and wiring's in place. I can always change these out later. So now I guess it's time to start sticking these headlamps in. Now I've had these clips for quite some time. They were a gift from Zeke, he says, I've read a number of comments. These seem to have the best reviews, nylon versus plastic. So thank you, sir. I appreciate that. The ones that were in here, you know, 35 years old and just crumbled apart. So there we go, all four headlights installed. I'm super excited about these headlights because originally those old sill beams that were on this thing, they, they had moss growing in them, I'll be honest. And 
projected probably about 10 feet out, just a yellow can. It's like a couple people holding candles, you know, sitting on the bumper. Not good. This is definitely a step up, and these are so bright that uh, if they're not aimed correctly, they'll blind oncoming traffic. So you have to be careful. It's really not the headlights' fault. It's the person that installs them, do, you know, and doesn't uh, aim them down and fails to fails to dim their headlights. I can't stand that personally because uh, you know you want to be able to see while you're tri driving 65 mile an hour down the road. So there we go. Looks really good. I got a lot of wiring to do to, to make those things work right. We do have a daytime running feature on these that wasn't even an option on this truck originally, which is nice. So we'll get all that wired up and then, well, I have to wait on that because I have to get the battery and stuff in, but now we can install the radiator. So there's a look at the radiator that I picked up. It is aluminum four core, so nice thick radiator with a shroud and the fans installed. And the reason why I decided to go this route over what I had factory is because the original radiator was, it was leaking. And also I did not have a shroud, nor did I have a clutch fan because mine, mine was wore out. So it was literally cheaper to go with electric fans and aluminum radiator than it was to go back with uh, all that stuff factory. So that's the way we decided to go. And this should have no trouble keeping this engine cool. So what I've got here is soon to be the exhaust system on my pickup truck. This is just a random kit that you can buy off the internet as far as pipes anyway. Not specifically designed to fit on my vehicle or any one vehicle. Just a random selection of pieces that you can use to make an exhaust system on, on whatever you need to, to, to make it on. I chose the mufflers, which are two boreless stainless steel mufflers, a couple flexures, some hangers, some clamps. And this is pretty much the majority of the parts that I'm going to need to get me an awesome exhaust system. So let me show you this stuff a little closer. I think you'll be impressed with the quality. I mean, I know I was. And we'll get started fitting this under the truck. So here's a little closer look. Really nice quality bends. They did a great job bending this stuff. Now, obviously, you're not going to use a section like that. You're going to take that and cut that to whatever angle that you need and, and you know make a bend or whatever. That's, that's all that's for. But really decent quality stuff. Nice and thick, should last quite some time. Really nice polish on it as well. I picked up the pipe, the mufflers, these two flexures, which were just uh, open on both ends. I did make and weld on this flange because this is gonna bolt directly to my header flange, which this is it, I had to make it as well. And then from that, we'll run the exhaust system on out. And I put these flexures here because we want the engine to be able to move a little bit, independent of the exhaust and vice versa. The exhaust is going to be hang, hung on these, uh, you know, rubber, rubber hangers. So there you go. Let's see if we can't get these flanges welded on the headers. And then we'll mount these flexures and then start working our way back. Everybody should get the opportunity to weld on underneath the vehicle at least once in their life. So just got this flange just stuck up on here. I'm having to angle it a little bit because this header doesn't run you know, perfectly parallel with the length of the truck. I mean, although it really doesn't matter, uh, I do want to get my exhaust pretty straight from this point back. I think but that's going to be pretty close.
Yeah, I like that. So I'll get that tacked on there. Just double check it and then zap it on there for good. Double check, make sure it's where I want it, because once it's on there, that's where it's at. I'll have to file that a little bit. Yeah, it's good, good enough. that's gonna work. I uh, migged it three quarters of the way around, figured out that I couldn't get to the actual top with the MIG gun, so I just went from the front, right, and then uh, TIG welded it on the inside all the way around. So that's what I'm gonna do on the other side, simply because it's just easier. Wish I would have thought of that to begin with. It's easy to make a pretty good looking weld when you're up on a workbench, but when you're laying on your back under a pickup truck, it's a little different story. So this is 3 inch 304 stainless steel. I think the seller, it was sold under the under the name Black Horse off the interweb, you know where it come from. Pretty surprised at the quality of this stuff. The polish is good on it, nice and thick tubing, it welds really good. Now I'm welding this in a way, I'm not back gassing it, really to get the best job. You know, a person should, should back gas the system, that way you don't superheat the other, the opposite side of the tubing, cause yourself a bunch of protrusions, because stainless, I call it sugaring. I mean, others may call it different things, but where you get, you superheat the metal on the inside and it basically burns because it's in contact with oxygen on the other side of the pipe, right? There's no shielding gas there unless you're back gassed. So what I do to avoid sugaring, something like this, is keep the heat way down and keep my speed up and do some test pieces, make sure I'm getting really good penetration and... You know, it's not the strongest way to weld this, but it will be perfectly fine and keep me from having a bunch of, uh, you know, burnt stainless on the inside of the exhaust and keep the corrosion down because it will corrode where, you know, you superheat it.
So now that I've got this section of pipe welded to my coupler and I've got my coupler mounted to the header, I'm just going to make sure that I mock up this exhaust and kind of get it level with the with the chassis. So I've just got a piece of piece of wire on it right now and I've got this little Klein nice electronic level. And I can just reference the way the truck's sitting and then make sure that my exhaust is really close to that. That way it runs nice and parallel with the with the chassis. That's kind of the idea. So here's a look at the mufflers. Pretty much a straight through design, just a stainless steel Borla XL, nothing super super fancy. One of the reviews on these said uh, they're loud, but not trailer park Mustang loud. And I thought that that was a really good description, one that I understood because I owned a, you know, trailer park Mustang and it was loud. These relatively quiet compared to that. At least that's the way they that's the way that they sounded from the videos and stuff that I've watched. I've never had any personal experience with these, but you get the idea. It should perform good. It should last a long time because it's stainless and still, you know, sound pretty good as well. So I've got this side mocked up to the muffler anyway, and I'm really, you know, nothing's welded or hung yet. Just debating on whether I should spend the extra time and go over the rear axle and behind the rear wheel or just skip all that come out maybe in front of the rear wheel I could do that or just do a simple kick down right here right cut that off and just kick down right before the rear axle nothing wrong with that it's super simple as well plus you know less weight on the exhaust system less to break less hangers less to bend and weld and you, you get the idea i don't know so I've got the easy side of the exhaust on this truck all mocked up and now I'm over to the more difficult side, the passenger side. And what I need to do is come out of my flexure, which is attached to my header. I need to immediately angle up, go over the transfer case to the side and between the frame rail. You know, it's not a real sharp bend, but you know, it has to happen. Now I could take some of the pre-bent sections that are in the kit that I bought of piping and and just cut my angles out of that but what i've decided to do is use the pie cut method for one i think it looks a little more custom because it it does and uh, i want to practice doing it because it it's a really neat technique that if you learn to do this which is not difficult i mean it frees you up and you can do exhaust systems for about anything and make them look pretty cool like the guys you see on instagram or facebook whatever so all it is really is a bunch of pre-cut high sections, little angled pieces of pipe that you choose which angle you need in order to achieve you know, the, the final angle that you want. And you just stack those up and weld them together. So if you have a saw and a welder, you can do this. So all we're trying to do by using multiple pieces is to smooth out the bend, right? You could do a 90 degree in two in one cut, right? Boom stick them together, but that wouldn't be good for flow, nor would it look good. So we cut that section into a bunch of sections and weld them together, and that gives you a really smooth transition and a pretty neat looking final product, right? So let me take you over to the saw. I'll show you how, how I did it, and it's just the very basic way. Uh, nothing super complicated about this. So let's go over there. I'll show you, show you the basic idea, and then I can get started installing this. It's going to look awesome when it's done. So the first thing that you need to do if you're going to do any pie cutting is lay your pipe out, right? So we need a mark on one side and a mark directly 180 degrees on the other, directly opposite of that. Now I'll show you how to do that with just the most basic tools, a piece of paper and a piece of angle iron. So take a piece of paper and wrap it around the piece of pipe tightly. And mark where the two pieces of paper meet up. See, I've already done that right there. Just mark where they meet up. Now, take that piece of paper off, fold it in half, like I've already done here. We're 
take one end, meet it up with your mark, and crease your paper. So now you can wrap your that piece of paper back around the pipe. We'll make a mark where we made our first mark. And with this piece of paper still tight, turn it around, and wherever our crease is, we'll mark that again. And those two marks are 180 degrees apart, directly opposite. And now we want to make two lines that run straight down the pipe like you see here. And the easiest way to do that and stay straight is with a piece of angle iron. So we'll just lay that on the piece of pipe and then take our marker, one, come over to the other side. And two. So that's it. So before we go to the saw, this has to be done. So let's go over there and I'll show you show you the other part of it. So I've got my vise angled at five degrees. And it's pretty important that each time we make a cut that we rotate this as close to we can as close as we can to 180 degrees, right? That way we get very accurate wedges and then when we're done we can use our line to you know, index our parts that way you know we get a nice smooth transition and I'm also using my vice stop here to give me the same amount of stick out each time I make a cut so you don't have to use the lines if you have something like this a little electronic level you can tape that to your pipe you can you know, put it on zero make a cut and then your next cut flip it over you know zero because this will measure either you know right side up or upside down very handy for a any type of fabrication shop. So I'm going to make a cut here and then uh, rotate you know, 180 and you know, make another cut. So we made one cut. Now I'm going to rotate this and make another cut. our 10 degree wedge. We can cut as many of those as we want to achieve whatever angle that we need. And then we just use our lines to make sure that our parts are lined up properly. And weld them together. I like to tack them first make sure that everything is the way that I want it before I start running wild welding them up
we go. Exhaust systems, they're almost always a pain, at least they have been for me. Usually my exhaust work revolves around patching up an old rusted out setup so it lasts me another, you know, month or two. This system I'm hoping will last a long time. Being stainless, it should. And I'm trying to take the time to make sure that it's ran as good as it can be and it doesn't rattle and bump up against the frame or the transfer case or be too close to the floorboard or the fuel lines or i mean you get the idea so i know i need these two angles but these straight sections i've just lightly tack welded that in so i can shorten it if i want i start it out a little long and then this section here i tack welded to this part that goes around the transfer case so i can use it as a reference to set my level on so it's a lot of in and out from under this truck in order to get this exhaust to fit right. But it'll be worth it in the end when it, you know, doesn't give me any problems and just works and lasts. Should flow really good. And if you ever crawl up under the truck, it should look pretty good as well. So I want my mufflers to, to be in the same spot because on this truck there's plenty of room and I can do that. And it just looks better if stuff's symmetrical. So I just got a rule here. I'm just kind of marking out the back of the muffler. And then transferring that over to this other, other section, of, section of pipe. And then I'll cut that. My mufflers will be, you know, same place. So would you look at that? That looks pretty decent, if I do say so myself. Now that is the pasture side, the far by far the most complex part of the exhaust on this thing. Literally, the driver's side is a straight run of pipe back to the muffler. It don't get any simpler than that. But the passenger side being this four-wheel drive, I had to, you know, skip by the transfer case up in the C-channel of the frame and right next to the floor. So this section here, which comes the closest to some important parts, I uh, wrapped, actually double wrapped it with, a heat, with the uh, header wrap. So it comes super close to the floorboard, transfer case, and the fuel lines and the brake lines. So pretty important that I don't get those too hot. So we just double wrapped it and then secured it with the stainless steel zip ties. So there you go, looks pretty good. I don't know about Instagram good, but good enough for me and good enough for this truck. So there we go. Now I just need to finish it on out. What are you doing? Soundproofing. What are you doing? Working on exhaust. <laughs> That one baby's riding his motorcycle. Is he riding it right now? So soundproofing is done inside the cab. Mm -hmm. Looks really good. You've done a good job on all that. Unless we decide we're going to do that, then... <laughs> yeah, if we, did, if we do the roof. But we'll see. Looks good. Thank you. Are you making fun of me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not good. 
So I'm super excited about this exhaust system. Three inch stainless steel mandrel bent tubing, dual exhaust all the way back over the axle, not completely finished yet. Still got to drop down, either go straight out or go out uh, behind the rear wheels. Haven't made that decision yet, but just that kit, the general purpose kit that I picked up was enough to get me all the way back to here you know, with the length of the mufflers and stuff. I and mean, that's minus the little uh, stainless flexures that I got. So this is definitely an instance of the buy once, cry once kind of deal. Yes, stainless steel pipe is more expensive, but you know, this is gonna last twice as long at least as a set of alumina steel. And if you're gonna put it on yourself, you're not really, you know, you're not, you're not really paying anymore. You're just getting a better product and you're not gonna have to deal with it in you know, the gravel driveway when it's 32 degrees outside. So super nice. Mufflers, same, same kind of scenario. They're stainless steel, not super cheap, but not near what uh, you, know, you could spend on a set of mufflers. So really happy with this system and I'll be glad to, to get it all the way to what run out. So if you're interested, you know, look into it. This is definitely thick enough to where you could MIG weld it. So there's no reason to TIG weld it like I did. You don't have to, but I just prefer to do that. So let me take you around and show you some of the other stuff that I accomplished this week. Some things that I may you know, not have shown on video and uh, wrap this thing up. So like I showed, got the wheels done, all four of them, and I started the body work on the cab corners and the rockers. And, you know, I'm probably about halfway done. Also wrapped the harnesses that come, the electric harness that comes into the doors, rewrapped that. It had electrical tape, you know, that had gotten gooey and was all falling apart with some super awesome tape that I'm just now, uh, just now coming, uh, I just now come in contact with or just now uh, seen for the first time. So I'm really impressed with this stuff. Let me, let me show you that super quick. So there's a look at one of the door harnesses. Now what I used to wrap this is a tape, it's Tessa tape, made in Germany. I am super impressed with this stuff and a roll just goes forever. And if you look at the cost of it, it's really no more than a good quality, you know, roll of electrical tape. It's got a really nice soft feel to it, super strong. You know, and from what I read, this is used on a lot of higher class vehicles. It looks really good and it's, you know, not sticky at all. So check that out. If you've got some harnesses or something to wrap, you know, you may not want to use this where, you know, where a harness is going to get wet, but inside of a door or, you know, under the hood, really nice stuff. Got a good look to it. Looks professional in my opinion. So there you go. Check that out if you're interested. So I got the passenger side inner fender wheel in, got the battery box in, also wired up my winch, ran my quick disconnect or my battery disconnect and mounted it to the inside of the uh, battery tray here. So all that's done, all my terminals are, you know, made and, and routed. I did not get my headlights wired up. I have to change my high-low switch on the inside. Also got this derail made in the U.S. here, fan relay. The setup super heavy duty gets really good reviews. This is the dual fan setup. So I am so impressed with this thing compared to the cheap kits that usually come with these aftermarket fans. This not only is it made here in the USA, it comes with awesome hardware and heavy gauge wire along with super nice instructions and you know an advertisement to, to for you to call them if you have any questions. Wow, that's like one of them snake things. So really, really nice. Super impressed with this kit. So if you're interested in running some electric fans, you know, look, call us if you have any problems. How many times do you see that in a big pink flyer? So 
like I said, super impressed with this kit sent to me by a viewer, and I really appreciate that. I am so sick of those little cheap aftermarket kits, relay kits that come with these, you know, generic fans. I burn them up. I burned up three on this uh, pickup truck before I ever started up started this rebuild. So, you know, it's constant. Are my fans going to work today with those cheap ones? So I'm hoping that this will last, but it should. It gets really good reviews. So, yeah, making really good progress. All right, guys, that's it this week. Man, I am super excited to see this thing coming along like it is. Now that I've got the exhaust at least ran, I can I can fire this thing up. It's, it's basically ready. Got a few little odds and ends to do, and then we'll be starting it up for the first time, which is going to be awesome. I can't wait to hear it. And I just hope that everything you know goes as planned. You never know. With all the work that's been done to this thing, you know, anything could happen. I am optimistic, though. So next week... Um, we probably won't work on this. I am planning to start working on the do-all drill press and replace, do some machine work and replace the uh, power down feed gears in that thing or gear because I'm really, really, really looking forward to being able to, to use that drill press as it was intended. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, much appreciated. And I will see you next time.